These are the frequently asked questions for Algebra 2, Section 3-4, involving our objective functions, feasible regions with objective functions. So starting with number 11 here, um, what I want to do is think about the fact that I, I have to get this stuff graphed in order to make this work. And so I'm going to get back out of the screen so that later on I'll be able to grab a straight line drawer here. And as I look at 11, again, I pretend it says x plus 2y equals 8, and I find the zeros. So 0, 4, and 8, 0. And then I'm going to come down to my little graph here and mark my 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and my 8, 0 right there. And then, because I want this to be accurate, I'm going to go ahead and use my line drawer right there. And it's not going to matter if I use segments or rays or whatever. The, the point is I need to be able to see the vertices. So then the next piece of this is um, to shade. You know, and it says x plus 2y is supposed to be greater than or equal to 8. So if I test the point 0, 0 in there, it says 0 plus 0 is greater than or equal to 8. Well, 0 is not greater than or equal to 8, so I need to shade above. All right, then the next constraint says x has to be greater than or equal to 2. Well, x equaling 2, and again, that line I can kind of do pretty straight on my own since that's a vertical line, uh, would be right there at x equals 2. And then greater than or equal to means that I have to go out to the right. And so I'm starting to see where that double shading is at right now. And then y has to be greater than or equal to 0. So here is the line y equals 0 right here. And it has to be greater than or equal to 0, so it has to be above that line. And again, what I'm looking for here is where is the triple shading? triple shading right here. Got a little like some plaid pants there for a second. That's where my red, my green, and my blue are located at. And now what I would want to do is figure out where are those vertices. And I notice that I have a vertex right here, which will be at 2, 3. Then I have another vertex over here, and that one was at 8, 0. Now, this one, we can see that the shading would keep on going up and to the left forever. So those are the only two vertices that we get here. And notice that they're only asking for a minimum. We can't give them a maximum because this keeps going forever up and to the right. So with my vertices, I'm going to place those into that formula, that objective function, x plus 3y. So for the first one, I would put a 2 in for x and a 3 in for y and see what I get. So that will be 2 plus 9, which is 11. That's for the vertex 2, 3. Then I have to put an 8 and a 0 in here. And if I do that, I get 8. And then I notice, hey, the 8 is the smaller of the 2. So the minimum Hang on, I need the smart board to behave itself. The minimum of 8 occurs at eight zero. So that is the minimum for number 11. Some of these have a, a completely closed figure, so we're able to use you know, all four, all five vertices, depending on how many constraints we have. Uh, but this one is going to continue on to the right and up forever. Then, the 
next ones that I thought people would ask about would definitely be the word problems here. And for now, I'm going to put a full screen on, but I'm going to try to get some straight lines later. So this one says, a city wants to plant maple and spruce trees to absorb carbon dioxide. It has $2,100 to spend on planting spruce and maple trees. They have 45,000 square feet available for planting. And A says, use the data from the table to write the constraints for the situation. Well, while I was going through it, I'm writing down, you know, here's my totals. So they've got a total of $2,100 to spend. And that's money. So I go to my chart and I look for the money and I see the spruce are $30. So I'll make the spruce my X. And the maples are $40. Myself enough room to write that. And then I have this $2,100 cutoff. And that means I could spend exactly $2,100 or I could spend less than $2,100. So there's my first constraint. And then the next total that they gave me was the $45,000. And again, I can't go over that. That is the area that they have available for planting. And as I look at the chart, I see that it's going to be 600 for the spruce, and it's going to be 900 for the maple. Now, obviously, you can't have a negative amount of trees, so your spruce are going to have to be greater than or equal to zero, and your maple greater than or equal to zero. And last but not least, I need my objective function. And the objective of all of this was for them to um, get more carbon dioxide absorption. So that's going to come from, that carbon dioxide absorption will come from 650 pounds per year from the spruce and 300 pounds per year from the maple. And what they want to do is maximize that. So A is writing the constraints, B is writing that objective function. And then C, we want to graph all of this. So again, you take a second and you, you think about where the zeros would be before you get over there and, and start coming up with your intervals. So let's find our zeros and figure out what we need to do. So if we have a zero in the x position, we're going to need 2,100 divided by 40. And that comes out to 52.5. And if we have a zero in the y position, well then we're going to need a 70 in there for the x because 30 times 70 will give you the 2100. And then the next thing we need to do is go down to the second equation. Same process, we're going to find the zeros for that so we can figure out what intervals we should use. So if we put a zero in for x, we're going to need 45,000 divided by 900, and that will give us 50. And if we don't have any of the maples, so zero in Y position, then we need 45,000 divided by 600, and that comes out to 75. So what I'm seeing so far here is that the largest number that I have that I will need to be graphing here is going to be 75. And I can use that to figure out, you know, how, to, how carefully do I want to make my, my intervals um, so that I can space those out a little bit. And again, we know that uh, this block, this particular block, has 20 spaces. So um, I probably want to go by fives, get it as close as I could. But again, I'm not going to write every single number down or it's just going to be cluttered. So five, ten. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. And the same thing up the other side. All right. So now I have my 0, 052.5 and 70, 0. And I'm going to get out of the full screen so that I can 
sheet and, and get a little segment drawer here to try to do this as accurately as possible. So I'm just mimicking what your ruler would do if you're using a ruler for this one. And then the second one was going to be 050 and 750. that line. Now I notice with both of these it, they both said less than or equal to so my sheeting for both of these would be going down and the next part of this is just telling me that I have to stay in that first quadrant because x has to be greater than or equal to zero and y has to be greater than or equal to zero. The next thing we would want to do, because it is, it's kind of hard to see where the intersections are. If I had to guess, um, obviously for my vertices, I would say 0, 0 is 1. And the lower on the y-axis of the two is what I'm going to be using. So that'll be 0, 50. And the same thing going on the horizontal axis, it was the lower of the two. So that one would be 70, 0. But it's this one right here that I'm going to be really careful about. And that appears to be 1540. But I'm, I'm not certain. You know, I'm, my lines, even with the grids, um, not looking exactly perfect. So what I would want to do is put both of these e first two equations into um, y equals mx plus b format and then plug them into the calculator and find where they intersect. And for that one, it ends up that the intersection that I'm looking for is actually 30, 30, which I never would have guessed from the graph that I have up there. And it's just because you know doing this by hand is just not real accurate. And I have a really thick line here. So 30, 30 would not have been my first choice for those graphs. And that's why we use that graphing calculator to find those intersections. And then once you do that, you're going to plug all of those into your objective function. And what we wanted to do was maximize absorption. So we would have a maximum of 70 spruce trees and zero maples. That would be your maximum here. So if we put that back into the equation for our objective function, that means we're taking 650 times 70. And that maximum absorption is going to be 45,500 and that carbon dioxide way back from the chart was in pounds per year. So 70 spruce and zero maples. Now I know I skipped over the part where we saw for Y. You guys have done very well with that in the past. And you just had to let your calculator find that intersection for you for that piece. Then for the others, I think what I'm going to do is help you set them up and then let you go from there. See if you can find the rest. 14 says we have a biologist and they're developing two new strains of bacteria. Each sample of type 1 bacteria produces four new viable bacteria and each sample of type 2 produces three new viable bacteria. Altogether, at least 240 new vi viable bacteria must be produced. So underlining that because it's grabbing me as that must be one of the totals that they want us to do. And then it says at least 30 but not more than 60 of the original samples must be type 1. Not more than 70 of the original samples can be type 2. And then we talk about costs. A sample of type 1 costs $5. A sample of type 2 costs $7. How many samples of type 2 bacteria should the biologist use to minimize 
or cost. That's to indicate to us that that's going to be our objective function right there, is, is going to be to try to minimize those costs. So as we go back through this problem, here's what we know. You want both the type 1 and the type 2. So x can be type 1 and y can be type 2. And then up here, it started talking about the new viable bacteria that must be produced. And it said each sample of type 1 produces four new viable types of bacteria. Each sample of type 2 produces three. And then our total was 240. So altogether, at least 240 new viable bacteria at least means it could be 240, but it could also be bigger than 240. And then we have two pieces in here that are, are different than what we set up in class because it says at least 30 but not more than 60 of the original samples must be type 1. So that means our x values, our type 1s, have to be sandwiched between 30 and 60. So at least 30 but no more than 60. You sandwich that in. And then it says not more than 70 can be type 2. So y, our type 2, needs to be less than or equal to 70. So we know we want some of the type 1 and some of the type 2. We also know that they cannot be negative. So we would want to put, put, put down those constraints of x greater than or equal to 0 and y greater than or equal to 0 to get it there. And then our objective function, remember, was about cost. So I'm going to call that C. That total cost is going to come from $5 for each type 1 plus $7 for each type 2. So the real work with this one um, is going to be making sure that you get all of these constraints worked out. And this one ends up giving you some nice vertices when you do that. Um, for number 14, our vertices will end up, uh, like I said, at, at pretty nice places uh, because we have some horizontal lines and some vertical lines here. There's one that you will probably have to find the intersection for with the calculator just to be certain, and that's going to be the intersection of this first equation right here with um, the 30 from the x. So what you'll want to do is just take 30 and plug it in for x here and then figure out what y is. And you could solve that one by hand if you want to. You wouldn't necessarily have to put that in the calculator. But like I said, I, I don't want to do the whole thing for you. I want you to give this a try. So see what you can do with that with graphing those constraints. And then let me get to one more of these where I'm just going to help you set it up. Um, this one is cooking. Baking a tray of corn muffins takes four cups of milk and three cups of wheat flour. Baking a tray of bran muffins takes two cups of milk and three cups of wheat flour. A baker has 16 cups of milk and 15 cups of wheat flour. Now, those definitely are some totals up there. And he makes $3 profit per tray of corn muffins and $2 profit per tray of bran muffins. How many type of each should he make? to maximize profit. So I'm not going to use cost this time. We're going to use P for profit. But let's talk about those totals that we have up there. So one of them, the first one up there I see is the milk. So I think back. All right, we've got corn muffins and we've got bran muffins. Hey, I can use C and B for those. So four cups of milk for the corn muffins plus two cups of milk for the bran muffins and that's going to have to be less than or equal to 16 cups of the milk because that's what they had for the total. And then the wheat flour, it's going to end up being the same thing. It has to be less than or equal to 15 because that is a total there. And the wheat flour is used 3 cups for the corn muffins and then 3 cups for the bran muffins. So we've got a couple of really good constraints here to use with that. And then, of course, you know, we know that they have to have some of each. So the, they're both going to be greater than or equal to zero. And this one, by golly, because the numbers are small, you might actually be able to find, if you graph 
pretty carefully. That didn't line up nicely, so I'm going to switch that. Uh, if you graph pretty carefully, you might get a really good look at those vertices for this one. And then your profit comes from $3 per tray of corn muffins plus $2 per tray of bran muffins. So you go ahead and graph those constraints and if you're pretty detailed, you might be able to find those vertices without having to use your graphing calculator for this one. And then put those into that objective function um, to find out which one will maximize the profit.